Um, yeah, so let's get started then. So today, Alexander Wolf will do the web webinar uh, together with me uh, as um, Zach is on the road and um, he uh, told us last week that he would be missing this and Alex could 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 jump in. Um, so let's get started here um, on this presentation. Um, today's focus will be on the SYN 200 uh, transfer switch um, and, and kind of how it fits all in to the whole uh, product portfolio. It's one of the products that we really like um, and Alex has always pointed out as, as one of the key features um, of the whole Grow Up uh, product portfolio. So, uh, Alex, if you go next slide here, um, we'll talk a little bit uh, intro. I'm going to jump in, um, jump through this pretty quickly as um, most of you guys have been in these webinars the last few weeks. So, Alex, next slide, please. Yeah, just uh, talking quickly over uh, the whole um, ecosystem that GrowWatt Grow offers. So they have the PV inverters, they have the energy storage portion, as well as the EV charger. And we we offer that whole product portfolio here at Frank and Solar. Um, it's really kind of crazy how fast GrowWatt has grown. Um, in the last, um, I guess, three or four years, they've had a compounded uh, growth of, I think I saw it somewhere earlier, about 92%. So um, they've kind of become the number one player in residential inverters. Um, I think that's the next slide, Alex. Um, I'll go, that's a little bit about the history. 2011 is when they were founded. And since then they've grown to be quite, quite uh, one of the top players in the inverter industry. There's the slide I was looking for. So um, this is really important, I think, for people to be aware of how big this company actually is and how big of a player globally they are when it comes to residential inverters. So they are now, uh, I think for a couple of years, the number one residential inverter in the world. Um, particularly like what we have seen is that they're huge in Australia as well as Europe and now over the last couple of years, they've really started to push into the North American market. Um, and we're very fortunate um, in the partnership we have as the exclusive distributor for Grow What in Canada. Um, we have a number of different um, uh, product categories, uh, residential solutions, which is kind of what we're focusing on at this point, uh, together with the charging um, solution that kind of fits into the residential as well. They have commercial storage solutions and commercial uh, grid tied solutions mm -hmm. as well. Um, and then a whole off grid uh, portfolio of products as well, which we will look into bringing in as well, together with the commercial solutions as well. Um, and then the backup, which Again, kind of ties into the uh, residential. They also have some portable solutions, which we won't get into at this point. I don't think there's a huge um, market there in Canada on this. Um, yeah, just a partnership I've already kind of um, discussed earlier. Um, we have an exclusive partnership together with GrowWatt, um, and uh, we're really excited about that. Uh, I think at this point, I'm going to pass it over to Alex, who's going to get into the main portion of the uh, presentation. Thank you very much, Danny. Um, I hope we can jump directly in to the uh, more technical side of the product and the system. Um, to start, uh, Growbot's approach, like some other companies, you want to have a one-stop shop kind of system for residential backup and residential battery systems specifically. When we look into the certification requirements that came in with the Canadian Electric Code 2021, things got a lot more difficult to place battery storage in residential homes or close to residential homes like garages or detached garages, for example. So having something that is compatible to each other, certified as a system, that's super important and easy to deploy on scale is yeah, the core element of that um, yeah, home system. 
When it comes to battery backup, um, a lot of people compare it to a backup generator they're used to. Backup generators are no new thing. A lot of people have them already installed. The big companies like Generac or Kohler are well-known brands. Uh, but there are different advantages um, having a battery-based system versus a um, yeah, generator-based uh, system. On the generator-based system, everyone knows um, you are depending on your natural gas supply, for example, and you're limited a little bit on yeah, the noise where you place the generator versus your, yeah, your neighbor's uh, patio to not interfere too much, as well as you have um, certain maintenance requirements on an ongoing basis to keep that system running. Um, compared to a battery backup system, it's typically completely uh, silent. Um, you install it, um, you have minimal components, it's just the inverter, the transfer switch, and the battery itself. And typically the transition time for most of those battery systems is significantly faster uh, than a mechanical transition from a generator that has to start once the grid goes out. The main topic of today's presentation, of course, is the SYN 200 transfer switch, because that is really the core of what makes the full home backup system from GrowWatt a system. And as I said before, it's a full home backup, so we have a full 200 amp transfer switch built in. It's, of course, a 120 to 40 system for a single phase residential supply. The transition time between the on grid mode, grid. Uh, comes down or has a, a power outage, and then uh, re-establishing the power supply is roughly half a second. And the transfer switch is also the, let's say, electrical cabinet where you line up multiple inverters or up to three inverters in this case. So you're not interfering with the bus bar rating of the customer's electrical panel. And we will talk about that a little bit later. You can also have an EV charger directly connected on that uh, SYN 200, but typically all the loads are connected downstream on the electrical panel of the customer. Um, the SYN 200 also has a generator input, which is quite nice. You don't have to use it, but it's there in case you want to uh, extend the system to have a backup to the backup, like a generator to your backup system. And it also includes a two-wire remote start uh, relay that can be programmed over the uh, robot uh, min XH inverter, that is the hybrid, um, to, re to start a generator if you are running out of battery power, for example. Um, multiple working modes. Um, the typical working mode, of course, is predominantly on grid. And the transfer switch, in case of a power outage, will remove the grid connection from the system and will reestablish, together with the min XH, a micro grid in your home. And that can be done with one, two, or even three inverters, depending on how much power and how much power requirements uh, you have. It has a built-in smart meter, which is quite nice because there's no external smart meter that needs to be clamped onto the main conductors on the electrical panel. Like with other systems, everything is already built in pre-wired. And uh, you can use that as a consumption metering for on-grid systems. So the customer can not only see the solar production, but it can, uh, the customer can also see how much power they're using and, of course, where that power is coming from. Is it coming from solar directly? Is it coming from the grid? Is it coming from the battery? And you can do um, some analysis based on that. So over the course of the year, how much RTAR key do I actually get from my battery system? how much energy is being supplemented by the grid, and they can look at those numbers to see uh, how efficient they are using their power and uh, where the power is coming from. The system, as I mentioned, is consisting of three main components. It's the inverter itself, which is the hybrid inverter um, that connects the solar panels, if you have it, and the battery system. You can even use that inverter without any solar, if you like, just as a uh, AC coupled or just as a backup system um, for, yeah, for a home, for example, with no solar connected. But of course, you have up to four MPP tracker inputs available. Um, you're welcome to watch our previous webinars where we go more into detail about the features of the inverter specifically. In this case, when it comes to whole home backup, um, the inverter is still providing the grid in a backup case. The transfer switch is um, what disconnects you from the grid and you have a wide variety of battery capacities and power uh, available to size your system. Is it back now? There it is. Yeah. Perfect. So 
the main three components, it's super simple to size a system because there's not a lot of extra stuff you need to select. It's literally the power of the inverter that you select. We recommend typically to use one of the larger units for backup, for example, a 10 kilowatt or 11.4 kilowatt, because that makes most sense for a full home backup. Selecting a 3.8 kilowatt hybrid for full home backup is a little bit, yeah, not the right size um, for the power requirements of that house. So typically the 10 and 11.4 will be the most suitable options. The also should be pointed the same. out. Also should be pointed out the price difference between a 3.8 and an 11.4 is not that big. So it definitely makes makes a, a lot of sense to size the inverter as, as large as possible. Um, exactly. And this, even if even if you have, uh, for example, only room for six kilowatts of panels on your roof, we still would recommend to go with the larger inverter in that scenario, um, which is kind of counterintuitive to what Frank and Solar and what we've been preaching over the last ye years when we just talk about sizing an inver and a system properly for solar but now with the battery portion you got to keep in mind the um the, the battery backup. portion backup portion as well when designing the system exactly going back to the system um the real advantage is it's one closed system that is designed for each other and with each other all the components and you have one monitoring portal taking care of all the features uh the readout of the meter, the actual monitoring of the inverter, of course, as well as the communication to the battery and, and everything. And it's very, very simple to install because one app will configure all the components in your system. And we will go over that a little bit later. The channel setup is as simple as it gets. You have your grid connection on the right side. You go into the grid input of the transfer switch. The transfer switch has a 200 amp terminal output which we'll also see later, that connects to the customer's electrical panel. You have the terminals that uh, wire up the AC to the mean XH, that is the hybrid inverter. And of course, the hybrid inverter gets the battery uh, connection directly to the inverter, as well as the solar in case you have it. You have the, the option to add the generator, but most systems uh, we see in the market typically do not have a backup to the backup installed, so typically no generator. But if you have it and the customer already has a system, you can always um, continue to use the existing generator. The operation of the SYN200 transfer switch is very simple. You have two relay inputs. In a normal operation on the left side and the on-grid mode, it's standard grid height. The grid relay is closed in the transfer switch and the inverter is directly grid height, supplies the load as a common net metering system as any other system on the market. In an off-grid scenario, you disconnect the grid, of course, to form your own microgrid, and now the inverter from solar power as well as from, from the battery side will supply all your loads. And in case you have a generator installed, the second relay can synchronize the generator to your system, connects the generator, starts the generator with your uh, generator start relay, or manually, both options are possible, and then the generator will supply the loads as well as recharge the batteries. When it comes to maintaining the battery and your battery backup system, there are two general systems uh, that are available. We'll talk about the most uh, common one, and that is the solar only. Let's assume the battery is only being used for battery backup. So the battery is being maintained by the solar. So all the solar power is being used to keep the battery charged and of course supply the loads um, over the course of the day. And if there's excess power, it will be fed into the grid, like again, any other net metering system. The battery at that point will always be kept at 100% or any other value you pro program into your system. The 100% is very typical. And the system is just waiting for the power outage to happen, but you're not using any grid power to actually charge the battery. The second option is um, you can charge from clipped solar, and that's uh, some nice feature. The inverter is capable of uh, connecting or have connected a lot of solar, so you can have a DC to DC or DC to AC ratio of 200%. Uh, so for example, on the 10 kilowatt inverter, you can have up to 20 kilowatt DC of solar capacity. And if you would curtail based on that high DC to AC ratio, that curtailed power would be used to charge the battery to keep that battery maintained um, 
for the power outage um, to happen, uh, to be ready for that case. This would mean that you can still continue to feed in 10 kilowatts, but let's say the 10.5 kilowatts that would be available from your DC side, the 500 watts will be taken to charge your battery. So you have no loss of um, clipping to keep your battery uh, fully charged. The installation of the SYN 200 is very, very simple. Uh, we have a picture here. Um, there's a cover on it where you see currently that, uh, that gray square. On the right side, there is a 200 amp uh, service entrance rated disconnect or breaker and disconnect switch. You see the terminal blocks and you have multiple ways of feeding your transfer switch um, from your meter base and going out to your electrical main panel. You have the possibility to wire it with conduits from the bottom. These are the two large uh, three inch holes uh, on the bottom. You can also feed it from the backside. These are the ones, uh, the two uh, caps you see on the back. You can also feed one uh, feed from the side and then go out to the bottom or out to the back. Any combination is possible uh, with your typical uh, conductor sizing from the meter base to the transfer switch and then from the transfer switch to your electrical main panel. You see here in this case, one breaker is pre-placed. That's the 63 amp breaker that is supplying one of the inverters. Um, you can place more breaker to the left between the uh, smart meter you see all the way on the left here uh, and the breaker that is currently installed. That's why you can have one as the most common example, but you can have a second and a third um, inverter placed and wired up in the same cabinet without touching any of the bus bar ratings and the size of the existing electrical panel. That is the, the entire system. You have a control board that controls and measures, of course, the voltage coming from the grid that it can immediately transition from uh, grid connected on grid operation to the off grid and backup scenario. You have here the 200 amp uh, contactors on the top. Everything is nicely done uh, with bus bars and you have large uh, yeah, terminal blocks um, that can accommodate copper conductors as well as aluminum conductors uh, up to 90 degree uh, temperature ratings of the terminals. You also have in the same uh, cabinet your auto former. The auto former is important to provide the neutral conductor once you go into backup mode because all of these transformerless inverters today are 240 inverters. So the inverter itself uh, only care, cares about the two phases. And in order to get a usable current carrying neutral conductor, you need to have that um, auto former that you see here on the top left in the picture. Um, again, 50 or 200 amp uh, rating on the um, input breaker. You have a 50 kilo amp input rating, which is typically sufficient for most utility companies' requirements. The uh, conductor sizing is very common, the four odd uh, uh, sizing. Neutral conductor is the same thing. The transfer switch you see here, I already went a little bit too fast in my explanation. Uh, DCTs are pre-installed, pre-wired, so nothing needs to be done. And um, the smart meter is on the bottom left. The only connection you need from a communication perspective is just a two wire signal with RS485 that connects the master uh, min XH hybrid inverter to that communication board of the uh, SYN 200. So very, very easy install, not only on the electrical side in and out, but also on the communication side when it comes to the combination of SYN 200 plus hybrid inverter. The display on the front of the lid, that's the, how it would look like once the lid is closed. Uh, it's very simple. You have four LEDs. Uh, the LEDs are typically in uh, green if everything is okay. There's a fault indicator if something is wrong. That's the rightmost, and that will show up as red um, if something happens to the system. And um, the layout is pretty much exactly identical to the layout of the inverter. So the inverter has the same communication symbol, DC symbol, battery symbol. So once you know how to look at it, um, no matter if you just have an inverter or an inverter plus a SYN 200 system, it's identical. Coming to the connection and the wiring of the system, as I mentioned, you have large terminal blocks um, that can be either aluminum or uh, copper up to uh, the wire gauge for odd. Um, you turn the breaker off, obviously, when you <laughs> install the system, um, you wire up your input side. Uh, in this case, you wire up the load panel first. Um, 
you do the same thing for the grid input to the terminals. And if you do have a generator, they are dedicated um, terminal blocks for both phases for the generator, the neutral conductor and the ground separately. So you have a very, very clear, easy installation for all the conductors um, that go into the transfer switch. The communication, as I mentioned, is a very simple two wire twisted pair. You can use a cut five cable. You can use any other twisted pair uh, cable um, for that matter that connects the SWIN 200 here on the left side where that green marker is to the inverters terminal as well. And then, of course, the inverter has um, the three wire plus ground phase one, phase two, the neutral and the ground directly wired to the terminal blocks um, or the, the bars on the bottom of the transfer switch, as well as the two pole breaker that is already built in. Uh, what we have to mention, the SYN 200 comes pre-equipped with a 63 amp uh, breaker. So you have to size your wires um, to that 63 amps uh, breaker size and the 125% uh, breaker sizing rule, which means that even though you only select maybe a 9 kilowatt inverter or maybe a 7.6 kilowatt inverter, which we again would not necessarily recommend for full home backup, but if you do so, you would still run the larger conductor size because the overcurrent protection here is at uh, 63 amps. General operation is very simple as well. As I mentioned, the system has a automated uh, generator start relay integrated, which you may or may not use depending on the type of generator you have installed. If you do have an automatic start generator, we are on the right side of that slide where the system based on low SOC and you can program any value of your liking, let's say at 20% uh, remaining battery capacity, you want to call the generator to assist the system. So you take over loads and to recharge the batteries. And then you can, again, select any SOC value. In this case, we have, for example, 95%. You can also charge to 100% if you like. And then the generator will disconnect again and turn off once the battery reaches the 95% uh, state of charge. If your generator is, for example, a smaller generator or um, some generator that does not have a remote start, then you would just manually start the generator. The system automatically detects, oh, we have, or the system has voltage detected on the generator terminals. It will automatically uh, connect the generator if the grid is still uh, not available, uses the generator to recharge the battery, and then you have to manually turn it off after the battery is charged. So typically most systems do have remote start because that's the easiest integration for your customer. The generator specifications right now are determined by the up to a 100 amp input capability of the generator terminal. Robot at the moment specifies the generator to be roughly at the 20 kilowatt mark. There will be a um, software update coming where you can be a little bit more flexible on the generator size that the solar inverter and the hybrid inverter can assist the generator at the moment that software is not ready uh, we were promised by Grobot that uh, in 2024 there will be a software update that has these capabilities but for the time being the generator needs to be sized for the charging capabilities you want to have for from the ac side let's say you program that your system will be able to charge from the generator with five kilowatts and whatever current load you want to allocate for the building, let's say you have another five kilowatts, at that point you need a 10 kilowatt uh, generator. If you want to upsize it to the maximum capability, of course, of the system, then you would be in that 20 kilowatt range um, that is listed here. The commissioning of the SYN 200 with the app is actually very simple because the main communication over that two wire signal I was talking about is selected here in the quick settings. The quick settings uh, have the, uh, the power sensor and the power sensor will be listed as electrical meter. Electrical meter and the SYN 200 are the same communication. So you just select the electrical meter and that will automatically start the communication between the smart meter and the entire uh, transfer switch to your master of the um, min XH hybrid inverter. If you do want to charge from the generator or from the grid, uh, you have to able, enable the AC charge that allows the inverter to utilize the generator or the grid to recharge the battery. Uh, once, for example, the grid comes back or in case you have a generator installed to utilize the generator as a backup to the backup source. And as I mentioned earlier, you can determine what level of 
state of charge you want to use the generator to start and at what point you want to disconnect the generator and that also applies to the charge in normal grid operation um, from the grid for example that you want to keep it at 100 percent, or if you want to for example allocate um, a certain capacity for backup and a certain capacity to arbitrage or day night shifting that was a topic we discussed in the first webinar that can be set here as well a typical application would be if a customer wants to take advantage of time of use then you would use the top 50 percent of the battery for day night shifting or time of use optimization and the bottom 50 percent state of charge will be allocated and kept for a possible power outage to happen so the customer will never be out of power and there's always energy left in the battery uh, in case a power outage is happening. Yeah. Hey Alex, is there any recommendations you would have on how much you'd uh, recommend that um, min uh, minimum battery power should be? It depends of course of about the size of your battery that have you that you have installed if you just install a 10 kilowatt hour battery that is not super large in the first place then maybe a 50 percent value would be good that you have a base uh, capacity of about five kilowatt hours and of course the solar system will be able to supplement if you have light uh, over the course of the day to recharge your batteries and to supply your loads in that uh, prolonged battery uh, backup case um, if you have, for example, a 20 kilowatt hour or even a 30 kilowatt hour battery uh, bank, then uh, maybe you can reduce that to only, let's say, let's say 25% or maybe 33%, so a third of the system, that you have maybe a little bit more capacity available for the day-to-day uh, -day operation on time of use or optimization of your system, if you want to use that, and then maybe have, uh, for example, 6 to 10 kilowatt hours uh, of reserve capacity on the bottom end uh, that is allocated to the battery backup. Uh, function of the system, but it really depends on the customer, how big their home is, how much loads they have connected, how much battery you have installed. Um, but you can start with that 50% range and you can always uh, adjust it later remotely as well uh, from the portal and say, watch the system consumption a little bit, how much the uh, customer's uh, power consumption is, and then say, oh, maybe that's a little bit uh, too conservative. You want to increase it or decrease it uh, to adjust it to the actual demand of the customer. Conclusion, the main message is that with the new electrical code in Canada, um, battery storage systems, specifically the ones that are put together with different components from different manufacturers, are very diff difficult to install, specifically since non not a lot of those systems and combinations are UL9540 system certified. With the whole system from Growbot, we have the UL9540 system certification. Everything is certified under one umbrella. The documentation is under one umbrella. The labeling requirements for the ESA in Ontario and other provinces is covered. And you have really an easy path of getting the system sized, sold, and installed because it's very, very simple uh, to do so. The system is also UL9540A fire propagation tested, which is part of the system certification to UL9540 which makes that system a lot easier to deploy and there are a lot less questions uh, to be answered for, let's say, combined systems from different manufacturers that we see on the market. The one monitoring platform is also um, very, very nice because you have a system that covers the backup portion, the battery, the solar portion, and if you add a GrowBot in uh, EV charger as well, you can even control and monitor the EV charging load directly from the same app. So for a lot of residential customers that have very, very similar applications, everyone wants to have a solar system on their roof. Everyone likes to have backup if they install battery systems. And most of those customers that are going solar and have battery are probably already thinking, maybe already have an EV. So having a system with an EV charger from GrowWatt um, that is available in 40 and 48 amps um, can be a very, very good uh, extension to that system. You're, you you're mentioned... Sorry, you're mentioning the um, the monitoring platform, and, and that, is, I believe, is the webinar we're hosting next week as That's well. Correct. So if you're interested and haven't signed up for that yet, uh, please sign up for that. Um, and yeah, I guess the other question would be for you, Alex, when are these available? Um, we will have them beginning of or end, end of September, beginning of October. Um, that's when the, the newest batch comes in. Um, 
product that will come in will be labeled, I mentioned earlier, the service entrance rating of the transfer switch that is super important for the market here. Uh, the previous generation of the Grobot SYN200 uh, does not have the service entrance rated labeling on the type label. So the batch we are getting, we work together with Grobot uh, to get some of those uh, details we need for the Canadian market uh, changed, will have that service entrance rated marking already on the transfer switch. And that again will be uh, beginning of October, uh, realistically. And um, same for the batteries as well? Same batteries, for the batteries right? and uh, the same for the version three uh, Growbot inverter for yes, we do have some limited amount in. of the Growbot inverters available right now. I believe there's some uh, sixes, seven point sixes, uh, tens, or an eleven kilowatt units in very limited amounts available um, that we were able to get in sooner. But the big shipments arriving late September, so um, look uh, for that. Um, Alex, there's also a couple of questions here. That I would like sure. to get addressed. Um, Leo has been asking um, if it was possible, and even if it is not recommended, to run the system entirely off the grid with a generator. So that is officially possible. Um, I would still say the system is predominantly designed and developed to be a grid height system with battery backup. You can use the same SYN 200 transfer switch and let's say a 10 or 11.4 kilowatt inverter or multiple of those. Uh, for an entire off-grid system. And yes, you can use the generator as your yeah, continuous backup source in an off-grid scenario. Um, transformerless inverters um, never have the same ratio between peak power and continuous power like a Sunny Island, for example, or an XW Pro from Schneider because of the transformer-based uh, technology of the older inverters. Um, it can be done as long as you size the inverters, the battery, and of course your generator according to the power and energy demands of that customer. So yes, it's possible, but you need to make sure you're covering uh, these design criteria and the peak demand and peak power of the inverter as well as the connected loads. Um, and are there any issues of using the inverter on its own? Um, maybe extend the system in the future to the SYN uh, 200 and the batteries? Exactly. And that's one of the big advantages of that min XH hybrid inverter. You can right now install a customer, a solar, a grid tight solar system, net metering, and just use the, the min XH as a simple solar only inverter grid tight. And you can go back to the customer a few years later, if you like, and say, oh, we have installed a system for you. You already have a hybrid inverter without ripping out the inverter, we can add the transfer switch and the battery to your system. And all of a sudden your system will be a battery backup system. And you have all these features for time of use and uh, battery arbitrage and whatever feature uh, you want to uh, pitch to the customer. Uh, that is possible. And that's one of the, the really nice uh, systems of these all in one hybrids, because it makes the sales pitch and the future upgrade super simple. I may maybe add one it, part to it. Can you can even go to add a battery backup system AC coupled to an existing grid height system. For example, a customer five years ago has installed a net metering system with a totally different inverter brand. Not a problem. You can add the MinXH, um, let's say a 10 kilowatt inverter with the APX battery, and you can AC couple the existing um, PV system without any changes to the existing infrastructure and the existing uh, solar system. Uh, Alex, would you would you recommend um, if if a homeowner is at all considering to add batteries uh, a couple of years down the road, but may not be quite ready for it at this point, would you recommend they're uh, using the SYN 200 and install that portion right now and do um, that, or do you re recommend that they just do an normal grid tight installation into the electrical panel um, and then go and install that SYN 200 later on? That depends a little bit um, how you want to operate your sales team and how you want to pitch it, as well as the current electrical system of the customer. For example, if a customer has a 100 amp panel and uh, you would like to add a bigger solar system, you may have to change the electrical panel anyways. With the installation of the SYN 200, even without batteries and even without the actual backup function of the SYN 200, you can put the SYN 200 in always on 
or the contactor and use the SYN 200 as your splitter box, more or less. And at that point, um, you're not really using all the features of the uh, SYN 200, but your system is already capable of battery backup in the future by just reverting it back to the automated option. And you don't have to rip up uh, or rip out the electrical panel of the customer right now. So at that point, it's probably cost neutral compared to upsizing the service or upsizing the bus bar rating of the existing panel. And um, you have something that could be a sales argument and an advantage to you to give the customer more features um, that are of value in the future compared to just upgrading the bus bar because there's not a lot of value for the customer right now if you just change the electrical panel. Um, yeah, the other thing that we don't, we don't usually talk about costs and stuff like that, but I think it's worth pointing out that the GrowWatt solution as its whole ecosystem is by far the most economical product in the market. Um, we have seen it being half the price of all the major competitors that have a, have a, a full home backup. Um, and, and you probably all know these companies um, out there that have, that have a, um, competitive, competitor products to this. This is literally half the cost. So it's definitely worth pointing out. And it is an extremely well-designed product. It, it's very sleek. We're really excited about having this, this partnership with Grow What it is. Um, it's something we've looked at for a couple of years. Um, and we were, you know, when we were able to, to come to this agreement with them and be able to um, distribute their products for Canada, it was it was a really big deal for for Frank and Solar, and we're really excited about this partnership. So, we also have in our Ontario location here for all the people that are close to to us here in Ontario. Um, we invite you to come come in. We have a fully functional um, system with 11.4 kilowatt a SYN 200 transfer switch, including electrical panels. So everything installed as it would be installed in a residential home including some load, uh, load testing equipment we have that we can turn on to see and showcase how the system transitions from on-grid mode to off-grid mode, how you wire it up. Uh, we can show you the app and configurations on a live system. Uh, we will also do that uh, in another uh, YouTube video to walk you through the different um, steps, what to do, how you install it, and what the tips and tricks are. But if you like to have a look for yourself, um, you're welcome anytime uh, to see the, again, fully functional and set up system in our warehouse here. Awesome. Um, then I guess the only thing, if there's no further question is to remind you, if you have any further questions, um, feel free to reach out to your uh, account rep at Frank and Solar. Um, there's multiples here. If, if you don't currently have an, uh, an account, manager, then feel free to send us an email to sales at frankensolar.ca and we will be happy to connect you with an account um, manager. Um, of course, also I'm available. Alex is available. Feel free to email us, call us. If you have questions, uh, we'll be happy to help out. Um, so Alex, thank you very much for your, uh, for your time today. Um, jumping in for SAC, uh, really appreciate it. And, um, just a reminder, if you haven't signed up yet for the webinar next week on the um, monitoring platform, uh, please reach out, uh, sign up for that. Or if you don't have the link, reach out to sales at frankensolar.ca and we'll send you the link over. Um, thank you very much. Bye. Thank you.